You just watch, watch that nose. Here we go. Three, two, one. Hi, I'm Peter Corbett with Creekside Angling Company in Issaquah, Washington. The one question I get most uh, after people see Todd's videos and they come into the store and they say, how did you catch those fish? And the most important thing, for me anyways, is not being seen, it's stealth. Because you can use any fly, you can have any length leader, you can have any reel, any rod, but if the fish see you, it doesn't matter what you throw at them because you're going to spook them. So staying, staying quiet, um, Staying way away from the creek before you make your cast is crucial. Don't wear a bright red or bright orange shirt, bright orange hat. You know, match your background. If it's a bright day, it's a sunny day, wear a blue shirt, match the blue sky. If it's a partly cloudy day, maybe wear a white shirt. Um, blend in with the clouds a little bit. If you watch Todd's videos, you'll see a lot of times I'm, I'm low and I'm close to the bank. And I'm using the bank to my advantage. I'm blending in with the, with the bank. Uh, if I'm standing out in the middle of the creek, I'm standing out like a sore thumb. The fish can see me. A lot of times, I'll sit on the bank for an hour, hour and a half, just either waiting for a hatch or watching the fish feed. Taught us some great footage in Big Sky of these trout that are just, there's four, five, six at a time coming up and eating flies. And we sat and watched that for 10, 15 minutes and didn't even think about fishing to them just because it was so cool watching them interact with each other. And they, they fight each other off for the, for the prime location, but they're just coming up and, and gobbling flies. And for me, it's a visual thing. Uh, there's nothing better than seeing, you know, what you're, seeing what you're about to, or attempting to catch. Oh my God, look at the size of that. When it comes to flies, the size is probably more important than color um, or particular type of pattern. There's been a lot of times I've been on the river with Todd and we've run out of PMDs and I put a blue wing olive on and as long as it's a, a 16 and it's the right size, the fish will take it. Um, parachute atoms will work in a lot of cases. There are days where if you don't match size, you don't match color, you don't match you know, pattern, you're not going to catch anything. But usually we find that if you just put on a fly that's the same size as what they're taking, uh, they're going to take the fly. Parachute atoms, great fly. You know, there was an old quote from uh, John Gerock has said, nine times out of ten, when the fish are looking up, they'll take an Adams. And that's, that's true in my experience. Um, don't get me wrong, there's times where you have to match everything perfectly, um, otherwise you won't catch anything. But generally speaking, size is more important than color. When you're Spring Creek fishing, you want to make sure you put floating on the entire leader. Um, and you want to do this every 10, 15 minutes. Uh, keeping that leader floating on the surface is going to keep your fly from dragging. And when your fly doesn't drag, you're going to catch more fish. Also, put, uh, put the floating on the first foot two feet of the fly line. People come in the store all the time and they're like, ah, I just bought this fly line a year ago and the tip's sinking. Well, the tip's going to sink after a while. The tip of a fly line is a little denser than the water. Um, if there's ripples on the water or the little knot uh, where the perfection loop is on your leader, that will cut the surface tension of the water and that will start everything to sink. Um, therefore, your fly's going to start dragging. When your fly drags, the fish don't like it. Unless you're skating steelhead flies. Leader length is important. A 17, 18 foot leader is crucial uh, when you're fishing a spring creek, especially when there's no wind. The great thing about a long leader is there's more margin for error. You can overthrow the fish a little bit and not have to worry about spooking them with the line. Another thing that'll help is if you can double haul. Um, usually on a spring creek your casts are 40, 50 feet, sometimes 60. Um, but a double haul will help you deliver the fly more accurately. Uh, another thing is the reach cast. because You can't always get the angle you want. Um, There'll be times we'll set up for a fish, a lot of times we'll take 10 minutes before we even make a cast. And you have to watch where the current's going, you have to see what's behind you, so there'll be times where you can't make a cast straight behind you, and you have to go with a reach cast from the side, or you have to, in some cases, you have to cast with your other hand. Um, I'm not a very good left-handed caster, but I can do it. Um, but there's times when you have to do it. Um, it makes a big difference whether you catch fish. A lot of times you'll see, uh, you'll see me crawling through the brush and stuff like that. It wasn't Todd just saying, oh, that'll look good. You know, that's, that's what you do when you spring creek fish. Uh, I've spent hours crawling through the brush on my knees. In some cases, uh, 
it'll take me 10 minutes of crawling, well not 10, but 5 minutes anyways, of crawling on my knees to get to the spot that I want to in the creek. And it's, it's not like I just walked up there and, and squatted down to look good. I crawled on my knees, or walked on my knees, to get to that spot in the river. Half the day I'm on my knees, and uh, most people just won't do it. Some waders have knee pads. Um, boy, I'll tell you, that's a lifesaver for me. Uh, I've got bad knees. I've crawled on my knees for you know 20 years of Spring Creek fishing. There are times when the fish are super particular, and that comes down to fly pattern again, but there's times when they'll be feeding in a lane and they won't move more than four or five inches left to right to take that fly. There's times where they'll go a foot and a half, two feet to take the fly, but a lot of times you'll find them confined, they just do this, they just go up and down, up and down. Very little variation from that lane. There's a scene in Big Sky where I've got my fingers apart like this, and people come in and ask me, well, what, what were you doing? And I was motioning to Todd that I think I'd missed the feeding lane by about that much. And sure enough, the fish came up and he took the fly, and you can see this big white mouth coming up out and he just munches the fly. A lot of times, again, accuracy is important. Therefore, having a decent fly rod makes a difference. Nowadays, they have no stretch fly lines. Well, that's great if you're nymphing. Uh, that's great if you're streamer fishing. But if you're spring creek fishing, you want that, that stretch. That stretch is going to help you with that 6x or 7x tippet. It's going to act as a shock absorber. Same with the soft rod tip. It's going to act as a shock absorber, and you'll hook more fish. Um, I find when I'm fishing my faster rods, yeah, I can adjust, and I can not set the hook as hard. But for me, slow rods are just, they're more fun to cast. Chest packs are great, they have their, their place, but for me, I want to be able to bring my raincoat, uh, put my lunch in the back, a bunch of water, bug spray. Um, with a vest, I can bring everything I need. Also, I like the fact that everything's right there. I mean, I've got a lot of places in the front. You know, with a chest pack, you're right there. It's all kind of in that little area. This way, I've got my you know, bug spray back here, got my leaders right here, both my fly boxes right here. Uh, by floating on this side, best for me are the way to go. Spring creeks are super slow. When you're fishing a freestone stream, the water's rumbling and the rocks are moving from the current. There's a lot of noise going on. When you're spring creek fishing, it is so important to walk softly, even if you're 10 feet from the bank. Fish's lateral line picks up the subtlest vibration. So just because you're five, 10 feet away from the creek, if you're walking boom, 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 heavy footed, the fish is gonna hear you. It may not spook them, but it's gonna alert them that something's going on. There's no reason to go fast. After the 4th of July, make sure you bring your hoppers with you. After, you know, four or five hours trying to make the fish fall for the banana of the tailpipe, it gets a little monotonous, and there's nothing more fun than splatting a big hopper against the bank and watching a huge fish come up and crush it. When approaching a pool, you always want to look and see what's going on. Say you see your big fish at the head of the pool. Don't go for that fish right away. Look behind that fish. Look five feet, ten feet behind him. And if there's fish feeding, make sure you pick those fish off, cook those fish first, let them go and get them out of the way. Uh, if you go for that big fish right away and you line that littler fish, you're gonna spook him and he's gonna run up into the pool and he's gonna spook the fish you really want. You know what I said earlier about bright colored hats and you know, red shirts, orange shirts, etc., spooking the fish. But when it comes to fly lines, bright colors really don't spook fish. If you've ever gone to New Zealand, um, your guide has told you to bring either to bleach your fly line or bring a bland colored fly line. Bright fly lines don't spook fish. Bad casting spooks fish. I've used bright orange fly lines my entire life. Uh, never used a, a ivory or a dark colored fly line. Bad casting spooks fish. 
If you put your fly line between the sun and that fish, you're going to cast a shadow and it's going to spook that fish. Color doesn't spook fish. Bad casting spooks fish. George Grant, who was known as the river keeper for the Big Hole River, had a great quote about fishing alone. And I can't remember it exactly, but he talks about how you should leisurely meander like the stream. Uh, you shouldn't be in a hurry. There should be no competition. And then he talks about soaking in the sights and sounds of wild trout. And that quote, every time I read it, describes Spring Creek fishing perfectly. Um, if you define success on a Spring Creek by the number of fish you catch or the size of the fish you catch, you're missing the whole point of being out there.